Kal Halal Yom La Yahweh Bahasham Shal Yahweh Shai, which is ancient Paleo Hebrew for all praises to the Most High Yahweh, which is his only Hebrew name, who the world ignorantly calls Jah, Jehovah, etc., in the name of Yahweh Shai, which is his son's only Hebrew name, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus and Yeshua, etc. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and salutations to the hopefully elect. That pushing the truth in the four corners of the highways and byways. Pray to discern divine dreams or deception. Right? And this lesson is mainly for the Israelites, the so called Negroes, Hispanics, Latinos, Amerindians, Native Americans, and confusion of faces that looks like the other races, that looks like the so called East Indian, Chinese, white race, etc. So the first scripture we're going to go into is um, Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 20, my son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. All right, well, we all know the father is talking about Yahweh. Uh, we should know. Forsake not the law of thy mother. That mother is talking about um, the land, Israel, because that land is governed by that law. All right, you can read about it in uh, Galatians chapter 4, I believe. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck that's uh you know that's metaphorically or poetically or same as a parable that bind them as in wrap them upon your mind wrap them wrap your head around these the, the laws and the commandments of the most high the evil word is lab where you see heart there is if you go into the strongs and the blue letter and where it says and tie them about thy neck that means let that be something let that be the words you always you always put out. That's why it says neck. Let it always be something that comes out of your mouth. Let it always be something that, that people can see. Something something that you voiced you know, uh, around your voice. So that's just a parable way of putting it, all right? When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. All right? And that's the main point, all right? That's the point I was building on. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. So these dreams... These night visions that the Mosai gave us, when we sleep, it will it will reveal certain things to us, and that's all based on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will, right? When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. So, I had a dream a couple hours ago. I woke up, um, you know, the dream was in, you know, not like basic telling you plain that is what a dream is about. But it, it spoke to me, and then when I when I thought upon the dream, you know, a bunch of scriptures came to mind, and the spirit of, the spirit of the Most High came upon me and said, you know, do a lesson to edify the church on how we should discern dreams, because some dreams can be deception, and some dreams can be um, divine, um, divine inspiration or a divine message. All right, and I'm going to explain the dream, but first let me just give uh, these scriptures on how we should be careful with these dreams. So this is. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 34 verse 1 the hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false so the hopes of like a regular man is void of understanding and vain and false because we might think we might hope for our own things but really we should hope well hope for whatever the father or heavenly father gives us all right because it goes on and dreams lift up fools now dreams could be like literal dreams or dreams can be like um goals so to speak or achievements they lift up fools for example there's a lottery game in 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 this land guyana called um, play the dream and there's several um dream scenarios like for example the, the superstitious nonsense of yours if you dream somebody married they can die if you dream somebody died they mean they're married or some some nonsense along that line so they have a whole list of those folklore superstition and you know if somebody actually have a dream i heard people saying that if they actually have a dream like that they're gonna go and play the game and choose that option but anyway proceeding whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catches catcheth a shot at a shadow and followeth after the wind right so if you take a dream to heart or every dream to heart it's like you're chasing a shadow because sometimes a dream is just meant to be a dream and then it reveals itself because when you get a little feeling of hey here I, hey, I did this before. Why well, I feel like if like I was meant to be here? That's a dream revealing because it it, ha it has happened many times. All right, and um, you know, even before I came to the street, I always loved the story of of Joseph. That's why I chose the Hebrew name Yawasap. 
you know, and I've always been a man of dreams, a lot of dreams I've had over numerous years, wrote them down, praying and hoping for the message. But now Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has revealed, um, you know, our true purpose and revealed dreams to me. Verse 3, the visions of a dream is the remembrance is the remem resemblance of one thing to another. All right, so in within your dreams, you'll see things that are similar to the to your reality. Whereby some some people see heavenly dreams or a facade, I should say, or or an idea of of or a, or a minor glimpse, so to speak, of of heaven or or the earthly concept concept of him of it. All right, because if you read First Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians twelve, I believe, one good one talks about um when um, one of the apostles was stoned he had a vision uh, of heaven and you know he couldn't comprehend it so moving on Sirach 34 and 3 even as the likeness of a face to a face meaning that a dream can be so real it feels like you're actually and you think that that's gonna happen like there was a time I like I couldn't tell only because you woke up on a bed that you knew it was it wasn't re it wasn't real but sometimes it feels so real of an unclean thing what can be cleansed and from that thing which is false what truth can come if 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 the most i gave you a dream that could that could lead to your destruction you can't change it and if the most i lead give you a dream that 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 is an awakening you know you can't change that fate basically that's uh that's how they put it in this verse verse 5 divinations and sooth soothe sayings and dreams are vain and the heart fancieth as a woman's heart in travail all right they're vain they can be meaningless but the main thing is that you get the message out to the dream and you don't try to change it like the prior verse you don't try to change that you can't change it because the scripture says in job 33 when deep sleep falls the man he, he, he sealed up the instruction those are the dreams those are those are the, the programming <laughs> the most is putting in for you to do that day Verse 6, if they be not sent from the Most High in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon them. Exactly. If they are not sent from the Most High, don't set your heart upon them. So in this lesson, I'm showing how you can discern or how you should pray for the Most High to help you discern and seek answers of certain dreams. Not every dream. Because like I said, certain dreams you can't get the answers no matter how much scriptures you read and so forth. It just That's just the way it, it is. Because... When I first prayed to pray for this gift, I thought I I thought most I would give me interpretation of every dream. But I had to humble myself and let Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai do his will. Verse 7 For dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. And put your trust in a dream. Don't expect because you dream a million dollars, you can you can get that million dollars. Verse 8 The law should be found perfect without lies. The wisdom is perfection to the faith perfection to a faithful mouth now what this is saying is that yes the most high will give you dreams and visions but it always comes back to the law the physical thing that you can see and that's the only way you can interpret dreams and i'm going to give you an example an account in the bible from saint joseph when you when you have a dream and so forth and you know you, you might know certain parts of the dreams it might be might click to you to certain scriptures you know, start searching, searching uh, the Bible, start searching scriptures. You can search uh, King James Bible online .org. They would show like the relevance and they would show words like just one word or but it what it's within context. All right. Now, the, another question, you know, some brothers might ask, why is it why the most I would give you messages in dreams if it can deceive you? Um, because certain messages can only be interpreted when your flesh is not active or so to speak or conscious you're in a in a spiritual um, hibernation so to speak this is why the most i um would reveal certain messages in night visions wisdom of solomon chapter 9 verse 13 for what man is he that can know the counsel of yahweh or who can think what the will of yahweh is all right we can know the will of the most high unless he revealed it to us verse 14 for the thoughts of a more of mortal men are miserable so we might think we know what is dreaming a, a chicken crossing road or some ridiculous thing like that you know oh the chicken means that this this branch of kfc could go across your hell to the no you got to go into these scriptures as you know saraka 
34 said, the wisdom can stand forever, you can always be truthful. Uh, read back verse 14 of Wisdom Psalm 9, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. So all our techniques, all of our schemes are uncertain. Verse 15, for the corruptible body presses down on the soul. Now the body is the vehicle, this flesh that we're in. The soul is, is who you are, your consciousness, your character. For, so this body pressing down, so while we're asleep, we don't feel that the body pressing on like you like it like certain thoughts might come to mind your body might ache you, you might be hungry so when all those distractions are, are out of the way the most i reveal these dreams in a in in, in deep sleep in a coded you know a spiritual coded method of, of his thing that's why it says who may know the counsel of the most high or who can think what is the will of the most high and the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things so let's just look at that word muse the person or personified force who is the source of inspiration for creative artists go back way down the mind that muse it upon all things so the the ideas the understanding of the scriptures this earthly tabernacle weighs down on it so when we release that we're more susceptible to receive these visions that the most high gives us verse 16 and hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon the earth we don't guess right and with labor do we find the things that are before us we gotta work hard you know because i i took a few hours to put this lesson together you know that's something that, that comes like that you're hoping that you find the right scriptures to get the message across to edify the church and not go off or cause a stumbling block for a brother or a sister but the things that are in heaven who had searched out who can search them out that's why they come in in parables they come in metaphors they come in um it's another word for like like a story mode right and in and thy counsel who hath known except thou give wisdom and send thy holy spirit from above we won't know the most high counsel unless he give it I didn't I wouldn't understand that dream if he didn't allow me to remember the dream because there's many dreams you don't remember except thou give wisdom most I give the wisdom which is your scriptures and the understanding send thy Holy Spirit from above you know verse 18 for so the ways are of them which live on the earth were reformed we are all reformed spiritually and soon to be physically and men taught the things that are pleasing unto thee we are being taught the things that are pleasing unto you which is the most high word all right and we're saved through wisdom you know hallelujah which people ignorantly say hallelujah now this is uh wrapping up why the most high um, reveal these things to us while we're asleep this is galatians 16 and 18 this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh so when you walk in the spirit certain things might come to you and so forth like for example you know for a brother you might be thinking you know there's a nice girl over there and a thought might come to mind hey check out the body but you know you shouldn't verse 17 for the flesh lusteth not a lusteth a slack you for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh so when you're conscious a lot of distractions might happen and these are contrary one to another so you know when the flesh is is put down he's asleep the flesh is asleep because as as um, Yahweh Shai said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak you know it's the spirit that drives in this body and these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would we cannot discern it because the flesh might be telling you that hey you gotta go and do this hey you late for work hey and so forth so forth but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law all right, so we let on the spirits, so we're not under the law. It means that you're doing what the what, what scripture says, therefore you're not um, thinking by the law. So let's, so I'm gonna read this account. Um, Genesis 39 and two. And Yahweh was with Joseph when he, and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So this is after his brother, his brother sold him and he was in Egypt, which is all part of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai master plan. So he was in the house of Egypt and Yahweh was still with him. He was a servant or a slave and he was doing doing the will of Yahweh 
and he was not partaking in, in the customs of, of the heathens, all right? Because the Most High wouldn't have been with him. That's why the scripture says he's never with the unrighteous. Genesis 40 and 7 to 8. And he asked Pharaoh, Pharaoh's officer that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly? Verse 8. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to Yahweh? Tell me them, I pray you. All right. So he asked them to tell him because he was confident he knew Yahweh was with him and he knows that it come from them. Genesis 14 16. When the baker saw the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream and and I behold I had three baskets on my head. So, but the main point is it that the baker saw that the butcher dream was interpreted well by Joseph, and you know he gave his dream, and they made a promise that if if they get out and so forth, must tell the Pharaoh and X, Y, and Z. But they forgot, and this is what it led to, right? This is Genesis 40 and 12 to 16, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him and. He interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. All right. So Yahweh gave him the vision of these men's dreams. Verse 13. And it came to pass as he, interpret, he interpreted to us, so it was. Me restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and shaved. He, and he shaved himself. He didn't ball his hair, he just trimmed it and changed his raiment and came into came in unto pharaoh and pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it why goes go to psalms 147 he gave his statutes and judgment and wisdom to the house of israel and so forth and i have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it this is how you know the spirit is dealing with a, a man a man of power a man of god Verse 16, And Yahweh answered, Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. Yahweh, the Most High, shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So he gave Yahweh all the glory. All right. So we always got to understand that is Yahweh gave, gave us a dream and only he alone can interpret it. We didn't wake up one morning and know how to talk to each other and know how sounds and stuff decode through our funnel air and into our brain and we understand that this word means that word this is the most i design so likewise with dreams and visions and everything he will give us understanding of everything this is genesis 4 1 25 and joseph said unto pharaoh the dream of pharaoh is one the Mosai hath shewed Pharaoh what he is about to do. So the Mosai can um, you know, reveal to the wicked, the heathens, what he's about to do. But only Israel can break it down. It's the Mosai will at the end of the day. right? But he had to turn to um, Joseph to interpret the dream. Now, the understanding of that dream could have led to his destruction. That's why I brought out that scripture. Could have led to Pharaoh's destruction. But if Joseph wasn't there, the whole of Egypt and all the land would have perished from the famine. If you read the, the entire Two chapters genesis 4 1 40 genesis 4 1 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of the mosai is so it was clear after joseph break down the dreams whereby he had he dreamed about two cows one fat one fine coming out of the water the fine one ate of the fat one and two corns or how much of a corns one fat and one fine and the fine one ate of the fat one which was a symbol of famine so basically you have to use the mosai word in order to discern these dreams so now i'm gonna bring up a dream through the spirit and mosai gave me all right and i broke it up into nine parts you should pinpoint um certain factors of dream like colors the satin and so forth to get a little better understanding i mean you know that's why the lesson name pray to discern divine dreams or deception because these dreams can deceive us of what Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai is trying to reveal to us. But, but when you go into like precision and so forth of certain things, it helps you to understand when you go in deep. That's why scripture says we strive for masteries. All right, so let me just read out the dream and then I'll break it down in, in parts, all right? There was nighttime, there was a yellow street light shining on the street to the east of us, but we were facing the north. And you know, us prophets was on the side of the road or pavement and it was dark and so forth you know we witnessed an army vehicle speeding and lost control and crashed and the wheels fall, fell off and a bunch of stuff you know nobody came out to a big explosion and then then we were sitting on a fence 
and then while you sit on the fence calmly passing were some black and white wolves no not all not one set was black and one was um white they were like mixed you know like certain they had a black spot on them or stuff like that a black patch like cows and we became nervous or fearful and the, the wolves started attacking and jumping high to our faces biting and growling and stuff like that vicious but not like extremely vicious and so forth and then appeared on then what appeared on one of the laps of, of the prophets next to us i believe it was like five or seven of us not too sure and next to me well, and, and on his lap was a was a terrier a little fluffy whitish dog right one of the wolf jumped so high to bite at the dog on on the prophet lap and then lastly we looked behind us and while while we looked behind us on the other side of the fence the it was darker and there were wolves quietly waiting you know behind us and so forth so now i'm going to break down the dream through spirit yabash and shire the scene was at night goes into the scriptures genesis 4 9 and 1 jacob called this unto his sons and said gather yourselves together that i may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days currently in the last days benjamin shall raven as a wolf and in the morning shall he devour the prey and at night shall he divide the spoil now esau represents the night and you know the morning represents when yahabashai comes right the apostle to break goes down and you know that's where i got the understanding you know how can we learn except a man teach first teach you and um he also used this scripture in another scripture in job matthew chapter 5 verse 1 to 7 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom five of them were wise and five of them were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil they're talking about they didn't take heed they didn't take the wisdom and understanding serious the half-assing but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps and while the bridegroom tarried they slumbered and slept they went back into the world but they slack off they weren't given a hundred percent they were lukewarm and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him see it was at midnight that's when the dark times you know current ecclesiastes 12 um, amos chapter 5 and so forth then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps so you know get ready their lamps and so forth the next part of the dream was when we were the prophets on on the side of the street you know it was like a highway because yeah remember it was on the east coast that's the highway east coast of guyana that is side of the road and this is matthew 22 9 and 10 go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye find bid them to the marriage so those servants went into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests bad and good you know those men that, that i might know the truth of the scriptures but they were trying to do it to the best of their ability likewise um those men who crept in unawares according to jude, jude chapter one Proverbs 29 16 is for when um we witnessed we witnessed the tumbling army vehicles speeding and lost control and crashing and fell. And when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth. That's what's happening in this world. And if if you can see through spiritual eye, the flesh being 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 fleshly is carnal and it already weighs down on the on the on the spirit, on the soul. So therefore, you go back to wisdom and Solomon chapter 9. It says, for the corruptible body presses down on the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weighs down on the mind, and music, music the things. So people who are walking in flesh, they're going to fall. That's why it says transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. So that's when we saw that army vehicle. We will see every single thing that the wicked built fall. Now, why were we sitting on fences? This is why. Isaiah 3, 13 and, and 2. Lift up a banner upon the high mountain the mountain talking about governments all right and the banner would be the most high word it would be the truth it would be righteousness exalt the voice unto them the voice not your voice the voice the most high word yeah the voice would be like when adam and eve heard the voice of the most high walking through the gardens that would be the prophets if it uh read the book of amos it talks about the prophets are the voice of the most high all right roughly paraphrasing shake the hand now this doesn't mean like shake somebody hand because if you read the verse before it's talking about babylon if this means like make a wave wave to your brothers and wave to your brothers and sisters you know 
It's like, you know, so there's some brothers doing some um, sign languages class, like sign language classes as well. You know, Tuari Hawa Tuari Awashai for their diligence. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. Now, if you look at this word noble, it means princes in the Blue Letter Bible. Go into the gates of the nobles. So, what's, what's the point of offense? And there's no gate. So, the prophets represent the gates. All right. So, when it says calmly passing, while we were on offense, calmly passing with black and white wolves spotted wolves and so forth it refers to the scripture matthew 10 and 16 behold i will send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves so we didn't attack none of us tried to attack or kick the wolves or whatever we were uh nervous or, or fearful but we didn't you know act carnal a fear came upon us and the wolves started attacking and jumping high to our faces so it's like esau waiting for the right point the right time to attack us and so forth that's the midst of wolves we are and the white represents um esau and the black represents our own people or vice versa you know the black it means black part of the wolves could represent um the darkness that is manipulating these wolves to attack us to try to bombard us you know like jesus is a third um no class malone you know them brothers over here that that believes in the old testament also uh, that's some other idiots in um in Queenstown, I believe that the most I could turn to a man and all that nonsense, all right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. So they had white, so they inwardly they're wolves just trying to devour and destroy the elect, you know? And there's a scripture that says, um, they might even deceive the very elect, some of these prophets. I believe it's in Matthew 24. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Um, this is the part of the dream whereby appeared appeared on the lap of the prophet next to me while while the terrier doll, right? Why would a doll appear? 1 Corinthians 4 and 5. Therefore judge nothing before time till Yahweh come, who both will bring to light hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart then shall every man praise Yahweh. so we can't judge a brother if he's stumbling or not well some people because you know, through the spirit you could discern that they mightn't come back but Yahweh Hashem Yahushai works in mysterious ways you know so make sure you make you make your calling election sure make sure you stay diligent right because it says who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart so this might be a, a, an area whereby a brother might be slipping and at the time that wolf noticed and brought out that weak that weakness brought out his old sin and tried to rub it in his face that's why the dog, dog was white as well which means that the white represents purity which means that he can um that that sin is no more because he wasn't phased by it but the, the wolf was trying to jump up and bite at that at that dog all right if it goes on to the next part of the dream one of the wolves jumped so high to bite at the dog on his lap so also this could also mean um this revelations 22 and 14 blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the into the city for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth to make it a lie so without the laws and commandments, you're a dog. So it might be an, there might be an area in a brother, a stumbling block for a brother whereby he became a dog, you know, or he did something like, like the other nations. And they, they're trying to bring it out and so forth. And, they, and the, um, the wolves, which could be false prophets or Esau, whoever trying to bring it out that, hey, you're dealing with a thing. You're dealing with something unclean, something something outside of the law. And try to highlight it and so forth. These dreams are uh, has depth and so forth, and only with the Most High Law you can you can break it down like this. You know, it's basically like examine yourself. That's why these dreams are for like ad admonition, admonishment. First Corinthians ten, twelve and thirteen. Wherefore let them that thinketh that he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Take heed lest you fall. That's why we're on the fence. This is a balancing act. If you think you're standing firm on this on this 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 fence, gates of the nobles, think again because we're the centuries. You know. We're the centuries defending um, Israel at this point in time. Verse 13. Therefore hath no temptation taken you, but such that is common to man. So it was something common to this brother next to me, or even me, you know, because I'm taking heed in this dream, because it could be me. It could be me, whereby you're looking back at the level that you were at, and you see where you came from, and you saw that this was your stumbling block in your area. That could be me alone sitting on the fence. You know, the most high, the most high is deep, yo. And we, we, that's why the scripture said we can't understand the counsel of him, and we, we, we're praying for wisdom and understanding every day. Twice a day, thrice a day, as much as possible, that he take not his light from us and make us understand the way of his precepts, you know?
verse 13 again of uh, 1 Corinthians 10 there hath no temptation taken you but such as common such as is common to man but the most high is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able so the, the wolves were snapping at it but they didn't get the dog they didn't get to him they didn't make him fall but will with temptation also make a way to escape that he may be able to bear it. So he, the most I can make a way for you to escape. No matter how much time these heathens and whoever come around, you can always make a way. All right, last part of the dream. So we the prophets look behind us and on the other side of the fence, it was darker. So there's like you looking back at your old life, your old mind. You see that, yo, I can't go back there. It was darker. And there were wolves quietly waiting. They had wolves right below us waiting to devour us, you know. And I hope I pray that this this lesson was you know edifying it to do it to the best of my ability and that's like looking back that like the scripture says if any man put his hand to his plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of Yahweh paraphrasing there's people waiting for us to fall because I, I can't recall in the dream if they were black or white or whatever, but there are people right there at your neck right there on the ass because we're sitting on the fence waiting for you to fall pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that you don't fall Psalms 27 and this is how the spirit this is imagine this is the last precept that Yahweh Hashem Yahushai revealed to me and it all came back to the first one watch Yahweh is my light and my salvation remember the light to the east of us uh, in the dream whom shall I fear we we didn't fear anything we were walking chilling and stuff like that Yahweh is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid so we saw the vehicle tumbling and so forth we just like try to run away and stuff like that when the wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me eat my flesh they stumbled and fell so first came the vehicles but this is in reverse because the vehicle was a, was a part that stumbled and fell but then later on the wolves came and tried to destroy us and eat our flesh and so forth so to speak verse 3 though an host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear so we were surrounded by wolves army people and so forth my heart shall not fear so it wasn't a great fear like oh shit, what we get? no it wasn't a fear like that it was just like startled because you know the scripture says that Yahweh shall come as a thief in the night and none of us shall be ready for that but the spirit will comfort us and keep us in check all right though war should arise against me in this will i be confident see that though war that's why it was an army truck you know this one scripture basically condense and, and give it a nice coat of, of the picture final finish a final filter if you will verse 4 one thing have i desired of yahweh that i will seek after and you know we were still on the fence because one thing we desire one thing we must seek after all day every day that i will seek after that i may dwell in the house of yahweh all the days of my life and behold the beauty of yahweh and inquire in his temple you know and that's within his word within his law such as commandments within his kingdom within his um his will yeah verse 5 of psalms 27 for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock so let's go into that word pavilion from this is from wikipedia in architecture pavilion from from the french pavilion from latino papilio has several meanings in architecture terminology refers to a subsidiary building that is either positioned separately or as an arc attachment to a main building often its function makes it an object of pleasure and in the time of trouble Yahweh Hashem Yahushua is going to is going to put us in 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 sweet happiness that's why he referenced the word pavilion and this is a, a subsidiary building as in his reserve his elect so to speak for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion so you know his pavilion would be his word so us brothers are here at uh following the yahweh hashem yahushai words doing his will to the best of our ability and faith and sincerity and truth yahweh hashem yahushai will protect us in his in his own little subsidiary building his own elected area so to speak so the hebrew for this from the uh, blue letter is sak that's a sa and a ka sak and it says king james translation count total four king james translates strong h5520 in the following manner as a den a pavilion tabernacle covert outline biblical usage is a thicket a layer a covert a booth we're going to the meaning of those words but let me just check the root word it'll be sakak ah there it is uh, outline biblical usage to hedge fence about shut in 
to block, overshadow, screen, stop, approach, or shut off, or cover. So you will be on a high level understand that the other nations, even our people, won't understand or can't get at us. That's what that, that you know, true spirit Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. That's what how how it revealed to me this dream means. So let's go into the uh, the uh, words covert, not openly acknowledged or displayed. So uh, like the name on um, Zephaniah which means hidden of Yahweh. that's what covert is a layer a place where wild animal lives well we know we ain't no wild wild animals but we will be in in the in the wilderness in a layer in the wilderness a secret or private place in which a person seeks concealment or seclusion thicket a defense or group of bushes or trees uh the scripture says that we are the most size um husbandry which goes into agriculture and so forth a booth a small temporary tent or structure at a market fair ex ex um, exhibition used for selling goods providing information and staging shows an enclosed um, compartment that allows privacy for example when telephoning voting or sitting in a restaurant but I guess voting would be like the election so this is a enclosed protection that our hedge that you have about Chanel Shai will have have about us and you know with that I hope this lesson was edifying to the spirit Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai Kal Halal Yom La Yahweh Bahasham Shah Yahweh Shai Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstones and salutations to the hundred and forty four thousand one third men, women and children destined to be saved in these last days. Shalom Bhakta.